And so I thought that was kind of an interesting idea. And then simultaneously, we were looking for naturalistic graphic novels. We're not sort of superhero aficionados. And so if I was going to find a graphic novel, it would be about something much more naturalistic. And so I happened to find myself at an expo that was below New York Comic Con um, promoting cameras because I was about to do a commercial. And when I was leaving, I was like, what? why is everyone in costumes? And I decided to go in. I didn't realize it was like the preview day of uh, Comic-Con in whatever year that was, 2012 or something. And so I wandered around and was speaking to some of the publishers and one publisher, Abrams Comic Arts, said, we have this book that no one's seen yet that we're really excited about, about for next year. And then she pulled it from underneath the desk and it was um, an advanced reader copy of My Friend Dahmer. And it was the a collision of these two ideas that I had, which was portrait of an artist or portrait of a serial killer's young boy, um, and a graphic novel, but it was based on a real person, my friend, you know, Dahmer. Now sure, I wasn't Dahmer. a huge serial killer, you know, um, you weren't a fan. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of serial killers. <laughs> Unbelievable. <know? laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> I, I knew that this was the collision of a couple ideas that I already wanted to attack, but even better, it was based on a real person. And I, um, Fortunately, when I reached out, I read it that night. I reached out to the uh, author that night, and he's from Cleveland. And fortunately, Harvest had already been to the Cleveland Film Festival where it won Best Feature. And so it wasn't like I was too random of a guy emailing because there had been a lot of people from Hollywood and elsewhere that were interested in his redo of this story of his friendship with Jeffrey Dahmer in high school because he had done a prior, smaller version of the same story. So... Um, this writer, the same writer, yeah. And who was that? I'm sorry, Durf Backdurf. Okay. And so he had done a like a a cult self published um, version of it, and then he was dissatisfied with it because it wasn't as extensive as he knew it should have been. So then later, a couple years later, he went back and he did it correctly in that larger, more detailed version of their high school days together as friends um, became this you know award winning graphic novel. Um, you know, and I and, and I guess what he realizes is I wasn't going to, because of Harvest and my conversations with him, he trusted that I wasn't going to exploit it and just turn it into like a horror film about um, a guy named Dahmer who's, you know, a monster in high school, because that's not what it was. They didn't know at the time that their friend would become who he became. So that's the truth about his stories, that he was just another one of the kids, like the oddball among their friends. And so he trusted me with his book. And then um, that- How long did it take to write the script? It took me a couple months to actually get motivated to write it. And then- um, And you did it on your own. Yeah, I did it. But I, you know, Jody was there through the whole outlining development process with um, Adam Goldworm as well, which is an old friend of ours and he's a manager. And so um, when we showed it to him, he, he looked at us as sort of uh, character driven indie New York filmmakers and he, lives in LA and bounces around much more in the genre community. And so I knew that this was a collision of those two dynamics. And so the three of us huddled and I, I wrote a vomit draft and then we re-outlined it and then we hashed out together and I kept working on it. And, uh, and then eventually I had done a movie called How He Fell in Love. And when I was in post on that, someone was sniffing around about the book and found out that I had the rights to it. and. Um, and then from there, I said, actually, no, I, I already wrote the script. And so now the script started to sort of float around um, development offices, I guess, in Los Angeles and ultimately ended up on the blacklist. And Okay, I, now, you explain that to me. I'm sorry, I should know what this is. <laughs> Tell me what this is. What um, is the, the blacklist? blacklist? The blacklist is this annual end of year survey of favorite screenplays that executives in Hollywood or in the film business um, have read that have not yet become a movie. So things that are ready to become sh shot, but you know, they may have actors and producers and directors attached, or maybe in, in my case it was just the, you know, the writer and the producers were attached. It's just a raw screenplay that people go, oh, this is, this is something we like. That's, just, fast, that's fascinating. See, this is something, I mean, not that I should know about this, but I should probably know about this. I well, have no idea that this existed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah I, I, I guess for, you know, writers, directors, and development execs that from from that point of view. When it's, I think of the blacklist, I, I think of the McCarthy era. Yeah. So, you know, when you're, when you're, you, I think that you're getting knocked out of the ability to be able to do your, 
your craft in general. No, I'm and proud this, to be on the and, blacklist. And you're, and you're, yeah, this is like this is like one of the great lists to to be on. Yeah. Well, it was very helpful yeah. for me. It was very helpful for me. Um, yeah. And and that opened up a lot of doors. And it it one thing it really did is all of a sudden I met all these wonderful young actors that were interested in in the role of Jeffrey Dahmer or the Friends. And I was able to sort of really get a full landscape of all the potential options out there of wonderful actors to work Explain with. Explain the mechanics behind that. So you're on the blacklist, and you meet all these actors. That are is there? Uh, uh, is 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 this? I guess maybe the question I have is talent getting attached, but not knowing you find out about scripts, right? In a lot of different ways, right? The reps generally, the if they're a young actor, they're, so, they're going to so get it from their they, agent or manager. Right, right, so the agents and the managers are pointing to this, right? right. Looking at this. And so being on the Explain blacklist that, helped yeah. kind of like brand it or give it a sort of a, a, a stamp of validation that this is something that, you know, I would like you to read, maybe meet with this director. He's made a couple movies that most people haven't heard of, but this is a cool project. And so I would meet with these actors. And... Um, try to find who could be the best Dahmer. And in, in the end, I landed and was very committed to this uh, wonderful young man, Ross Lynch, who was just leaving his Disney show, Austin and Alley, and uh, locked into him as the future Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs>